as we continue to look at finding derivatives, we're going to continue to add more shortcut rules to help save the time and energy it takes to use that long derivative formula. Today's shortcut rules are going to focus on the question of how do we find the derivative of products, things that are multiplied together, and quotients, things that are divided. And this is basically going to break down into two new rules that we're going to add to the exponent rule that we saw in the previous video. First is the product rule, which says if we want to take a derivative of a product of two functions, two things that are multiplied together. And actually, let's color code this. We'll say the f of x is blue and the g of x is green. The derivative of that product, those two things multiplied together, is going to be the derivative of the first part times the second part plus the derivative of the second part times the first part. So we don't just take the derivative of both parts. We actually have to do the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. So let's see what this looks like to help us find the derivative of something like 3x plus 4 times 2x plus 5. Since we have a product, we see the 3x plus 4 is multiplied by the 2x plus 5. If we want to express the derivative, we take the derivative of the first part. The derivative of 3x plus 4 is just 3. And then we multiply by the second part exactly like it is. Plus, now we take the derivative of the second part. And the derivative of 2x plus 5 is just 2. And then we multiply by the first part, the 3x plus 4. So we have the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. Let's practice a few more of these to get comfortable with this product rule. Let's take 5x squared minus 7x plus 2 times 3x squared plus 2x plus 7. Again, we've got two pieces that are being multiplied together. So to find the derivative, we'll take the derivative of the first part. Using our, product, our exponent rule, we have 10x minus 7. We want to keep that in parentheses to show that that entire thing gets multiplied by the second, which is 3x squared plus 2x plus 7. And then we add the derivative of the second part. Again, we'll put it in parentheses is 6x plus 2, using our exponent rule, times the first part exactly like it looks, 5x squared minus 7x plus 2. And now we've got our derivative. Let's try one more example using the product rule with a little bit of a more involved function. Let's do the square root of x times 1 over x squared. And one thing we found from our previous section on the derivative using the exponent rule is whenever possible, we want to rewrite our expression or our function with exponents. So we're going to show that this is x to the 1 half, representing the square root, times x to the negative 2, representing the moving x down to the denominator. So again, we've got two functions that are multiplied together. So if we want to find the derivative, we take the derivative of the first, which is 1 half times x to the negative 1 half, times the second, which is x to the negative 2, plus the derivative of the second, which is negative 2, x to the negative 3, times the first 
x to the 1 half. This one, we can do a little bit of cleanup in the algebra. So let's go ahead and clean up the algebra. We know we can add exponents. So we have 1 half x to the negative 4 plus 1 is 5 halves minus 2 x to the negative 6 plus a half is negative 5 halves. And those are actually like terms, both of them with an x to the negative 5 halves on them. So 1 half minus 2 is negative 3 halves, x to the negative 5 halves. And that simplified quite nicely to a nice derivative. What's interesting, though, is we could have used our exponent properties before we took our derivative. Because with this product, we can actually add the exponents on that product. 1 half and a negative 2 gives us negative 3 halves. And then we could have just used our simple exponent rule and brought out the negative 3 halves and subtract 1 from the exponent to get negative 5 halves. And that might have jumped us to the solution a little bit faster. So something to keep in mind as we're taking all these derivatives in this unit is sometimes algebra, before we take the derivative, will make the answer easier to come to without having to use the product rule or another rule. So that is our product rule. You should become very familiar with the product rule, the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. The other thing we wanted to look at, though, was the quotient rule. The quotient rule says we're going to try and take the derivative of a quotient, some function divided by another function. Well, the formula for the quotient rule says that we're going to first take the derivative of the first, and we'll multiply by the second by the denominator very similar to the product rule at first. But instead of adding, this time we're going to subtract the derivative of the denominator times the numerator. And then there's one extra piece with the quotient rule is we have to divide by the denominator squared. So it's a bit more involved of a formula. But again, we should become very familiar with this formula because we will have to take lots of derivatives of quotients. So let's try a few of these. Let's start with 3x plus 1 over 2x minus 1. And if we want to take the derivative of a top function divided by a bottom function, what we do is, according to the formula, we take the derivative of the top. The derivative of 3x plus 1 is just 3 times the bottom, 2x minus 1. With quotient rule, we subtract and then take the derivative of the denominator, which is 2, times the numerator, which is 3x plus 1. And that all goes over the denominator, 2x minus 1 squared. This one simplifies quickly without much work. So let's go ahead and distribute through the numerator, giving us 6x minus 3 minus 6x minus 2 all over the 2x minus 1 squared. Combining like terms, because 6x minus 6x is 0, we end up with negative 5 over 2x minus 1 squared for our final simplified derivative. Let's try another example. This one's going to be a little more involved. Let's do x squared minus 4x plus 1 over 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. And again, we've got a top function divided by a bottom function. So we can use the quotient rule to find the derivative. 
For the quotient rule, we take the derivative of the top. Using our exponent properties, we have 2x minus 4. In parentheses, so we show the entire thing is multiplied by the denominator of 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. Minus taking the derivative of the denominator using our exponent properties is 6x plus 2 times the entire numerator, x squared minus 4x plus 1. And that has to be over the entire denominator, 3x squared plus 2x minus 5 squared. And this one is going to be a lot more work to simplify, so it's probably not worth our time. Let's just leave that as it is. This becomes our derivative. Let's do one more. Let's say f of x equals the cubed root of x over x squared plus 2x. And as we know, when we see a cube root, in order to use our exponent properties, we're going to change that to x to the 1 3rd over x squared plus 2x. And then we can see we can use our exponent properties with a numerator and denominator in the quotient rule. We take the derivative of the top, which is 1 3rd, x to the negative 2 thirds, times the bottom x squared plus 2x minus we take the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x plus 2 in parentheses. So we know the entire thing is multiplied by x to the 1 3rd all over the denominator x squared plus 2x squared. Now, in terms of simplifying this, Something I notice is we've got fractions inside of fractions and negative exponents. So let's clear the negative exponent by multiplying by x to the 2 thirds on top and bottom. And clear the divide by 3 by multiplying by 3 on top and bottom. And we're going to distribute that through onto both terms. And when we do, the 3's divide out, the x to the 2 thirds divide out, and we're just left with x squared plus 2x minus, when we do, we've got a 3, and then we've got x to the 1 third times x to the 2 thirds is x to the 3 thirds, or just x times 2x plus 2 all over 3x to the 2 thirds times x squared plus 2x squared. Let's go ahead and distribute and combine like terms just because it's not too much work. We've got x squared plus 2x minus 6x squared minus 6x all over 3x to the 2 thirds times x squared plus 2x squared. Combining like terms, x squared minus 6x squared is minus 5x squared. 2x minus 6x is minus 4x, all over our denominator of 3x to the 2 thirds times x squared plus 2x squared. And that is our quotient rule. The derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. And we can actually combine these two rules together, product and quotient rule, into one problem. Let's do f of x equals 3x minus 4 times 9x plus 14 all over x squared plus 1. What we see is there is a product rule in that we've got the top divided by the bottom. The catch is as we start to take the derivative of this function using the product rule, we start by taking the derivative of the top. 
Well, the top is a product, 3x minus 4 times 9x plus 14. So we have to use the product rule in order to take that derivative. The derivative of the first is 3 times the 9x plus 14, then plus the derivative of the second one is 9 times the first one, which is 3x minus 4. And all of that in parentheses represents the derivative of the top. We still need to multiply by the bottom x squared plus 1. Then we subtract the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom is just 2x times the top, which is the entire product, 3x minus 4 times 9x plus 14. And it is all over the denominator squared. In this case, x squared plus 1. The entire thing is squared. It's big and ugly. But it wasn't too difficult to crank through the steps to take the quotient rule with the product rule inside of it. So we've got two new formulas that you should become very familiar with in this section, the quotient rule and the product rule. Practice some of these on the assignment. In class, we'll answer questions and go over some applications. We will see you then.